Joining us, ladies and gentlemen, from the United Kingdom is a guy I've wanted to get on for a long time. He's one of the founders of UKIP with Nigel Farage, the rock star of liberty now in Europe and England. And, of course, Lord Christopher Monckton. He's a member of the European Parliament for Yorkshire and uh, Humber for the United Kingdom Independence Party. Uh, he was first elected in 2004 and re-elected in 2009 before becoming MEP Bloom worked as a financial economist. Godfrey Bloom is the president of the European Alliance for Freedom, a Eurosceptic pan-European political party. Godfrey Bloom, MEP.co.uk. And he is just an amazing, this is a founding father level guy, folks. The people that gave us Magna Carta, the people that gave us Bill of Rights and Constitution, due process, the people that paid with their blood, these guys are paying with their time and their energy. And I salute God. I think he might have been on once before about five years ago. But the point is, he's on with us now. And UKIP has just had huge victories in England. They're having victories in the EU. Liberty is really getting popular. This is history happening. So, Mr. Bloom, thanks for giving us a report from the UK on what's happening. Oh, great pleasure. Great pleasure to be on the show again. You're right. It was about five years ago. Very enjoyable. That's right. I was saying maiden voyage on the show, and I went, wait a minute, I've had this guy on before because I've seen you in Parliament doing, you know, debating these people. What is the state of the world right now? You're in the middle of the EU tyranny. What's happening with the EU? What's happening with UKIP? Uh, what's happening with Nigel Farage, popular worldwide? Ron Paul, popular worldwide? You're popular worldwide. Again, we're not bragging like narcissist egomaniacs. It's like a sonar ping. The fact that liberty is so popular and that personalities promoting liberty are so popular, what does that say to the plutocrats. Well, it's interesting. Uh, an interesting development now uh, is, of course, that the political class, who are classed apart, uh, who behave uh, and have many of the characteristics of the old landed aristocracy of the 18th century, uh, they are the new aristocracy, uh, and they ride roughshod over everybody. Uh, and the divide between the political class. Uh, and the uh, and the ordinary people has now got to the stage uh, that there's almost we're getting into a sort of an electoral rebellion, uh, which is what we've been working for for quite a long time. And we broke through the major breakthrough was last week uh, in our local government elections, uh, where we shot up to 25 percent of the vote, uh, and that's taken an awful lot of hard work. But of course, people now uh, are beginning to say. Um, uh, in times of recession, nobody goes to the barricades, of course, when they've got a full tummy and two cars in the garage. But times are economically very hard now for ordinary people, and they're now looking very much more closely at how they are governed. They haven't done this for some time. Uh, and now they're looking at this and they're saying, just a minute, we are being misgoverned uh, by basically by crooks and charlatans, and they don't like it. Well, very well said. Uh, so, so basically, what I'm getting from you is that there is a global awakening happening, and you're really seeing it even start in England. Uh, what does it mean that UKIP has had such a huge victory uh, in uh, the local elections nationwide? Uh, well, this is a this this really is being uh, looked at by everybody. It's a phenomenon, uh, and it's based on. Uh, people having the feeling that they want to reject the political class. And, of course, this has also happened in Italy, uh, where they did it a different way. They elected um, a professional comedian, uh, which, is the, the, which was very much their way of rejecting the political class as well. And, of course, we're seeing the breakdown of the euro, the single currency, which, of course, was inevitable, uh, which Nigel Farage and I have been... Uh, have been calling now, uh, well, I was calling it at Cambridge University in the mid-1990s before it even started. It was deeply flawed. Uh, it was a political currency. It was a way of trying to uh, jam down the throats of the people, uh, a super state of uh, Europe, uh, which is based broadly on, the, uh, on a fascist, uh, on, on a fascist uh, style of government. And I don't use that term as a pejorative term. Uh, which is often used, and it's just a statement of fact uh, that there are two differences. Fascism is controlling the means of production, and communism is owning the means of production. And now we've gone into a fascist state which controls the means of production. They're controlled by rules and regulations, of which we have 2,000 a year coming out of Brussels. 75% of the laws now uh, of the United Kingdom 
uh, are made in Brussels by unelected bureaucrats. That is illegal under our own cost constitution. It's illegal under our Bill of Rights of 1688. Um, and uh, it's also in breach of Her Majesty's coronation oath. So this whole thing has been illegal from the start, uh, and it's now beginning to show. But one of the problems that we've had, and I know you have this problem in America, because I visit America quite a lot, and I have a lot of American friends, um, is that we have had a failed education system for the last two generations uh, where young people aren't taught uh, what their rights and what their liberties are. So, for example, uh, if you st stand in front of a class in the United Kingdom, and I bet it's the same in America, and if you talk about the concept of the presumption of innocence, uh, habeas corpus, um, uh, the fundamental pillars of the English system of law, they will st stare at you. They don't know what you're talking about. And, of course, that makes it very easy, doesn't it, to take liberties away from people if they don't know that they had them to start with. Um, That's and right. And, that, of course, is what's been happening. A member of European uh, Union Parliament, uh, Mr. Bloom, uh, joins us right now. Godfrey Bloom, we've only got one more little short segment. He's got to go at the bottom of the hour. We're about to go to break, but I want to get this in here right now. What is happening, because you're inside the EU watching it from the inside. How bad is the meltdown? Uh, what's going on with the open tyranny of the bureaucrats being tax-exempt, uh, the Frenchies being caught, uh, the socialists not paying their taxes, but everybody else has to? I mean, how long can this craziness go on? What's going to happen with Europe? It's already breaking down as we speak. Uh, it's, already, uh, it's, it's already failing. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a, something in my throat here. Um, there is a... There is a it's failing, um, but of course they're in denial. The uh, the parliament, <coughs> excuse me, the parliament is in denial, and they're just pretending it's not happening. It's a bit like Hitler's bunker. They're moving imaginary armies around the Elbe, uh, and uh, I don't think it can last like this very much longer. Well, I agree with you. I actually use that analogy quite a bit. I don't have anybody else use it. It's true. They're moving imaginary armies around on the bunker uh, and it, it's not real anymore and but they are still in control so when we, when we come back I want to ask you where you expect it to go how big a deal it is because people are like well why do we care if you kept it's like Ron Paul folks it's libertarian pro-sovereignty pro-family anti-tyranny pro-due process and the, and the media over there goes they're fascist they're fascist but now the Brits and, and people in the UK are listening and the people in Europe are listening and now mimicking it and going no no, they're real liberals. They're classical freedom people. They're Thomas Jefferson. They're William Wallace. Uh, but finishing up with member of the European Union Parliament, Godfrey Bloom, uh, it's a big deal to have people that basically are constitutional libertarians. I mean, sound just like Ron Paul, sound like me. You know, anti-globalist, exposing the Bilderbergs. To have them going from 3% to 25% to, and now having other parties imitating them and having the mainline parties scared and, in a parliamentary way, they're, you know, you had 25%, you win 25%. So they're taking over, and even mainline analysts are saying it, but Europe is collapsing. So you're an economist, you're an expert on this. In the five minutes we have left, Mr. Bloom, uh, what is going to happen with the big central banks? What's going to happen in Europe? Uh, well, we have the problems here of, uh, of debt, uh, overwhelming debt, debt that cannot possibly be repaid. Uh, the shadow banking system owes Germany somewhere in the region of 900 billion pounds. That can't possibly be repaid. In the United Kingdom, we've just moved over a trillion, uh, a trillion pounds, not dollars, a trillion pounds uh, of national debt, which is going up at 10% uh, every year. Even since this so-called conservative administration took over, it's still going up at the rate of 10%. So it means the conservative, the so-called conservative, because they're not conservative at all, the conservative government is going to hand back in 2015 a national debt, which is half as much, again, as the one that they inherited. Uh, nobody is yet, either in Europe or the United Kingdom, prepared to admit that this whole post-war welfare experiment uh, has, has failed, uh, that you can't... We spend in the United Kingdom £200 billion a year... Uh, on welfare, we borrow that money to pay young people to sit at home and not work, 
uh, we import uh, workers from Eastern Europe and other parts of the globe to work, uh, while as, as much of our young indigenous population is unemployed. It's 28% and rising. In Greece, it's 50%. The Iberian Peninsula, 50% young people unemployed. That isn't sustainable for any society. You can't have that number of young people unemployed. Uh, the banks, the Fed, the ECB, the Bank of Japan, the, the Bank of England are all printing money. That must end in disaster. Uh, we're going to have to get back somehow to hard money, commodity-backed money. Uh, we're going to have to get rid of the central banks, which actually manipulate interest rates. Old people are struggling because their savings aren't getting in interest rates. They're defrauding the, 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 the savers uh, in Europe. They're defrauding them. People who have led, led, led good lives, people who have led sensible lives, they've worked hard. They've worked all their lives, and now they're not getting any interest. Uh, and the country, all these countries, uh, are in debt. They're handing on huge debt to their children and their grandchildren. And I can't see, personally, any way out other than default. And that goes for the Europeans, the United Kingdom, and sad to say, I think default is possible in the United States. And the, uh, at Davos, as you know, their answer is bring in global carbon taxes to prop up SDRs, 100 trillion per decade, to give the very insider bankers that engineered all this even more power, they think they're going to get a total takeover out of it. So they're militarizing police and things. But I don't think that's going to work as the public just totally withdraws consent from them. Uh, I, I mean, I see a giant Ceausescu type event happening over and over again. What do you see? I see the same thing. We saw the Soviet Union collapse. It happened. I was an ex-soldier. I was stationed in Germany by and by. Uh, and uh, I saw the collapse of the Soviet Union. It happened very much quicker than we thought it possibly could. Uh, and I think the European Union certainly will go the same way. Um, it's, I think it's already happening uh, where people are having their money stolen by bankers in Cyprus. Uh, this must come to other parts of the European Union uh, with bankers actually uh, stealing your money, not allowing you to take money out. There'll be capital controls. You won't be able to take your money out of the country. Uh, and I think we're going to be looking down uh, uh, the barrel of a very serious revolution. I don't know quite what form it's going to take. I don't know whether it will be a violent one. I don't know whether it will be uh, an intellectual. I hope it will be an intellectual uh, victory for ideas of libertarianism. Um, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, that one country, whether it's your country or my country, uh, will lead the way. Uh, we need to lead the way so people across the world can see uh, that we can get away from this mercantilism. We can get out of the clutches of central banks, uh, fraudulent and cheating politicians, um, and self-serving bureaucrats. We can do it. How it's going to actually pan out, I don't know. But it must happen. It's got to happen. Absolutely. All right, Godfrey Bruin, let me say bye to you during the break. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.